Okay, so this is the last video of consonants. Uh, we're going to look at some sounds that are produced at the soft palate and in the voice box. <clears throat> and this is going to finish off our review of English consonants and, and some, and we've been throwing in some extras along the way, right? Uh, in, in English, we have four sounds that are produced at the soft palate and then one that's uh, produced at the voice box. Uh, we've actually covered one of these sounds already. Uh, remember the W sound uh, produced at the lips and the soft palate. So I'll only briefly review it here. Uh, and for the others, uh, only the nasal is really going to be odd. And then there's a couple of sounds here that we don't have in English, but we do have in other languages of uh, North America. Uh, so we're going to have a look at them as well. So there'll be a total of seven sounds covered in this video. Uh, so the first sound uh, is represented with the lowercase k. This is the k sound. Uh, this sound is voiceless. It is a stop, and it's made at the soft palate. Now, English does use k to represent this sound, as in kid, but it also uses c, like in can, and q, like in quick, or uh, quiet. Um, sorry. Uh, and we can also use cq, like in acquire, or ck, like in picky. And sometimes uh, you get it spelled uh, ch, like in ache, or character we saw earlier. Uh, the letter c, of course, represents other sounds too. Originally it did just represent the k sound, but it's changed over the centuries. Uh, so it's, especially in English it comes up as the, the s sound, like in Pacific and circle. And of course we do have silent k's in English, like in the words no and knee. The next sound uh, is the g sound, and that's represented in IPA by a lowercase g. Uh, this sound is voiced, uh, it's a stop, and it's made at the soft palate. So it's like k, except this one is voiced and k is voiceless. Uh, this sound uh, is in English always spelled with a g, uh, like in girl, again, and log. Uh, sometimes we add an extra h for fun, uh, like in the word ghost. Uh, things to watch out for in English, uh, although it seems well behaved, are there's actually some other ways that G shows up. So the G is always spelled with a G, uh, but the G doesn't always represent a G. Uh, so in the words giant and nudge, it represents that J, one of the affricates we saw in the last video. In laugh and rough, the G and H together represent a, a F sound. We would transcribe that with a lowercase f. Through and sign both have it as a silent letter and the word ring uh, the g is part of how we represent this ng sound which guess what that's our next sound so this n with a tail on the right leg uh, is the the ipa symbol for the ng sound this is a, a voiced sound it's a nasal right air is flowing through the nose and it's produced at the soft palate. Uh, now in English we always have the letter N involved when we're when we have this sound around uh, and it's basically always followed either by a K like in think or a G like in finger. All right uh, now in these words the K and the G are also giving their own sound but we do have words like singing where the G we, we don't, most English speakers don't normally say singing, right? You don't pronounce the G as a G, it's just working with the N to produce the N sound. Okay, so a little bit of a trick to it, but not too bad, I hope. Uh, so here's a sound that's found in one variety of English, Scottish English. This is the H sound represented by the lowercase x. And the h sound is voiceless, it's a fricative, and uh, it's made at the soft palate. Uh, now as an example we have the Scottish word loch for lake. Uh, that ends with this sound. Uh, other languages with this sound often spell it ch or with just an x uh, or kh. So another sound, and this one isn't found at all in English, 
is z, and it's the voiced counterpart of h that we just looked like looked at, and I have difficulty figuring out how best to describe this character. It's kind of like a V with a loop hanging off the bottom of it. Um, anyway, this is the voiced counterpart of the X sound, the H sound. So it's voiced, and like the X sound, it's a fricative, and it's made of a soft palate. And this is used in some indigenous languages. So the G sound, um, it's generally when a language does it, it's more often than not spelled G-H. Uh, and it's used, for example, in the Pinchon word Gokwiga, Gokwiga. I'm sorry about my pronunciation here. I'm not very well practiced in Pinchon. Um, uh, this word means hair. And I just want to acknowledge that I got that word from the Pinchon Yati Multimedia Dictionary. And there's a link there, and I'll put it in the, the notes of this YouTube video if you want to click through it. So the next sound in this video is one that we already dealt with. Uh, we dealt with it in the video on sounds that are produced at the lips. And uh, remember that the W sound, the W, is produced at the lips and the soft palate. It's a voiced glide produced in two places at once. It's normally spelled with a W, but there are some other ways uh, that we talked about in that earlier video. Like I said, I'm not going to spend a bunch of extra time here uh, the main thing to watch out for is silent W's at the beginnings of words in English. Okay, and the last sound that I'm going to talk about in this video is the H sound. So the IPA symbol is lowercase h, and it does represent the H sound, the sound that we use to spell that in English. It's voiceless, it's a fricative, and this is a sound made at the voice box. So fricatives are made by narrowing something in the voice box. You bring the vocal folds close together so that when air goes through, you get that, that hissing quality to the sound. And we have it in words like hoot and a head. Okay, uh, H is used in a lot of other ways in English. So it's used for the ch sound like in chin, for the sh sound like in shy, the th sound like in thin, the f sound in phone when we use a ph instead of just the f, uh, and it can be silent like in, oh, sorry, it can be silent like in the words honest and rhyme. Okay, and I know there are some languages uh, out there, some indigenous languages that have a glottal stop, which would uh, go in that top row uh, across from k and g. Uh, under the voice box. Um, but for now, uh, we'll leave this video with those seven sounds uh, for <coughs> four English sounds of the soft palate, plus those two uh, fricatives, and then the one H sound of the voice box. Okay, and I'm gonna uh, just say, you know, that's all of our consonants. So we've finished going over the consonant sounds in English. We've added a few of other, a few other interesting sounds along the way. And for every consonant, you can now identify it by those three facts that I introduced at the top right of each of the consonant slides. Uh, the place of articulation, the manner of articulation, and the voicing for that consonant. So when you're uh, learning about and describing sounds, you learn those three facts about a sound and you'll know which symbol to use. Okay, I think that's good for now. The next video will go through some vowels.